I hear the spirit in the sky when the northern lights are dancing. OMG, Kano, Kino, however you say it, they have won Melody Grand Prix 2019 in Norway. Shall we talk about it? Let's, Let's do, this. do this. The spirit in the sky is calling. Kino, the fan favorite, have won, and they are headed to Eurovision 2019 in Tel Aviv. First thoughts on the performance. I've got to say the staging elevated this. The studio cut I thought was good, but the staging makes this so Eurovision. It is bold. It is loud. It draws you in. There's mystery. There's magic. I think the three voices actually really work well together. They are so different. You've got Miss Alexandra Roten given that heavenly angel. Almost has an R&B quality. There's something so soulful about it. Voice. You've got Tom Hugo. So cool. So, I don't know, the voice cuts through it draws you in with that mysterious quality and then the wild card from queen of hearts and ace of spades we go to the joiker mr sammy himself this is fantastic a different flavor serving that indigenous realness reminding us norway has many people inside of it many traditions and cultures to draw from it's quite magical and otherworldly angus I completely agree. I really think this is sort of the triple threat package. Um, I mean, actually, I mean, it's funny, that kind of stagecraft professionalism, it really puts me in mind of kind of BWO, Alcazar, like the famous trios we have maybe seen come close to getting Eurovision, but haven't got there before. Um, and there's so much they can do with the staging. Like, I think there were lots of really fun camera angles that worked really well. They're all evenly matched. It's not like anyone is carrying the dead weight. They're all at the same kind of talent level. And I think um, also this season, at least, this is maybe one of the first proper kind of fun bangery songs we've had after Spain that is sort of the upbeat energy people look for. Nothing against ballads. Ballads have their own moment in space and time as well. But I think this is really fun. You know, it's great quality, Scandi pop, and also having the yoking element. I mean, I think, you know, we've seen Sweden come close a couple of times with Jan Henrik Fjallgren, but never really take the plunge. So I think that's nice to have kind of that different sound there from Scandinavia, but it's packaged up in a very modern, um, danceable, fun thing. So I think it's great. My only thing around the performance is I thought it was kind of dark for what is essentially a fun song. Like they start off, in darkness but for me um, and also actually I almost thought too much like the expressive dancers I thought were a little bit unnecessary the drummers I liked and, but I actually think like the three of them you can do lots of fun and they have a lot of movement and camera angle potential there so it's almost yeah a lot going on um, with the dancers but yeah I think it's fun I think it's great I really enjoy this um, and like a really good song choice from Norway I think yeah, definitely. I'd have to echo all of that. Um, this is just an amazing song. The song itself, before we saw the performance on stage, just has such a mystical quality to it. It's very Norwegian, but also very, um, very mainstream as well. It really transcends several genres and it all comes together as one incredible package. When, when we did get to see it live on stage there, um, I really liked the beginning of the song and how it was staged. There was shots of Tom Hugo when he was singing with the um, dancers in the background and then uh, Alexandra as well with the dance still going along. But towards the end, I felt like the performance got a little bit too um, chaotic. There were dancers, there was a marching band, there was all these lights going on. It, it was a bit a bit chaotic and obviously they can't do all of that with the six person limit at Eurovision but I think for national final staging it was very good and I'm sort of happy that it, it wasn't perfect there's elements that they can improve on to come up with the perfect package for Eurovision in Tel Aviv. Really good points. I think the cluttered staging at the end, we have to remember that national broadcasters have to serve a domestic audience. They're closing their show. This was 10th in the running order. They want people to stick around. So I think all the drummers and kind of excess at the end was to be like, y'all stay put. This is gonna be exciting what happens next. Loved it as a show closer. I think the beginning is quite interesting. The camera angle, you actually see the dancers as spirits in the sky because there's the fog and the camera's down low and you're looking up. And then you have Tom, Alexandra, and the Joy 
Wicker, whose name I cannot remember, forgive me, standing in the front. Quite mystical and magical. I really like the interpretive dancer, actually. It was the spirit in the sky. Um, the song talks about this ancient Sami tradition of kind of protective spirits that are out there, protecting individuals, protecting people from evil. And you can put that in many different forms. You know, for instance, my family is Vietnamese and we keep images of our dead relatives on the wall and like you pray to them and stuff because it's kind of the Buddhist tradition, spirits, etc. You also have people who talk about spirit animals, you know, the, the thing out there that's like them and protects them. Um, you know, the tradition of angels, if you want to put it in a different context. So all of this idea of something protecting you, and that comes through in the lyrics. Have you seen my spirit lost in the night? The violent nightshade, they took away my light? They call us nothing. My name is nothing. Come see me. Please see me. This is deep. And this, you know, that could be your friend. That could be a relative, someone who is looking out for your best interest. I think this works on many levels, but with the joiker element, it becomes spiritual. It gives me the feels, y'all. It becomes this otherworldly thing. And yes, some people will think, oh my gosh, this is like drawing your vision 20 years back because it's just too much, it's too crazy. But frankly, I'm glad there's some crazy because I'm so bored of people playing it safe. I'm so bored of people playing it safe. And this is at once club friendly, certainly. And also people who just watch Eurovision for like the wild side will love this. Mm, completely. I mean, I actually think if you look, um, it weirdly sort of puts me in mind of Waka Waka by Shakira that has that like modern dance sound, but also those sort of ethnic elements there. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think this really, I also think it's interesting if you look at the running order, because they're in the second half of the second semi-final. And I really think they're in contention to close the show. It has that kind of element of kind of like big staging. And I think you felt that in Norway as well. Like the running order, a lot of people were saying it favored them. They were last, but they lived up to the expectations. I think sometimes you get to the last song in a running order and there's so much kind of weight of expectation and hope on it. It doesn't quite meet or measure up but i think this measures up really well and um, it's really strong it's really i think the spirituality is great i just found the interpreter i just thought the interpreter dance was necessary i thought they were talented enough without it the dramas i actually like i think that's good intensity in the end um but yeah i mean they compare things back for tel aviv but i think there's so much there's just lots of good potential here i think this is really lots going in norway's favor yeah, there's a lot of drama on the stage with all these different elements happening there. And it'd be really interesting to see what they do bring to Tel Aviv and what they leave behind. I think the um, traditional elements of the um, uh, of the Sami in the chorus there just makes this quintessentially Norwegian. It makes it something that you wouldn't get from anywhere other than the Scandinavian countries. It has that national identity, but at the same time, it's really accessible to anybody who's tuning into this because of the sort of mainstream sound that Tom Hugo and Alexandra have. And so put all of that together, and I think it really is a complete package. It's got something that can appeal to everybody, and I think it will do really well come May. Just going to read a comment quickly from Norwegian ESC Lover. This is on our website, weebyblogs.com. Norwegian ESC Lover writes, This was a really emotional night for me. As a Norwegian person, I've always wanted Joik to be present in to be present in modern Eurovision. Today, Kino made history, and I'm so proud of them. Spirit in the Sky is a unique song that I think will do very well at Eurovision, and thank you, fellow ESC fans, for supporting this song. It means so much heart. That is very sweet. Yeah. Final point for me, at Eurovision, they can obviously do more with the staging, with the graphics, etc. And I think this idea of Northern Lights, the lyrics, when the Northern Lights are dancing, when every wind is blowing, when Northern Lights are dancing, they can do a lot with that with the lighting that will be at their disposal in Tel Aviv. So I think this will only go up. Yeah, I have to completely agree and echo it. I thought they set a really high bar for themselves at the national final. Great vocalist, lots of talent, fun stuff to do with the vocalist. And also, you know, it has a USP selling point as a dance banger in the yoik. Like it has, that is the thing all the commentators will touch on when they introduce it during the live shows. It will have its own kind of hype and character. Yeah, absolutely. I think this is going to do really well for Norway. It's got a great draw in the second half of the semi second semi-final, as you said. Um, my only concern is it didn't appear to do all that well with the juries on the night. Only one of the ten juries ranked this as their favourite, which is a little bit concerning because I could see the same thing happening in Israel. 
But at the same time, the the way that the Norwegian voting works, we don't get to see the jury's full ranks. I mean, it's possible that the other nine juries all rank this second and it could have been the jury's favourite. We just won't know because of the way that they present the results there. But um, I think this is definitely going to be a favourite of the televote and that is going to carry this to some great heights in Tel Aviv. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that last year when I was on the jury, Rebecca actually won the jury vote, even though she had fewer flags than Alexander, but that isn't revealed, so you never know the full story, which is an interesting way to do it. And I've just got to say, in the in terms of the Sammy element, this shows how broad the genre is, because this sounds nothing like Jan Henrik Valgren. Do you know what I mean? It's like Sammy music, and yet this is so different. So what a wonderful and vast tradition for us to explore. In any case, that's what we think. What do you think? Are you loving Norway's Kano? Do you think they will slay at Eurovision? Will they do well with the juries at Eurovision? Or do you think this is going to rely on the televote? Let us know here on Weebly Blogs. Make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any more comments. Um, and yeah, make sure to visit the comments section so we know your opinions on Kino too. And make sure to follow us along on all social media, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, all that jazz. Make sure to follow along. <laughs> we'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.